Hello, hello. Setting up to start, and it is raining outside. Yeah, that's always great for these things. It's raining. It's pouring. Can I my icy cheeks? Yeah, I know. It's like, I'm not supposed to touch your icy face, but... What can we do? Hey, Pico! Wow! Super early, Pico. <laughs> yeah, I heard you had uh, internet issues over the weekend. Is that so? Oh, now I'm wondering if the monitor acts as a fill light. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not at full brightness, but the day it is. Oh my gosh, I'm excited for today's topic because it is close to my heart. Wow, two days of internet issues. That's terrible. Yeah, that's that's not fun at all. Hope the weather isn't so bad where you are. It is raining quite strong right now as we're starting this episode, which always makes me nervous because uh, we always treat the internet as um, sensitive to water. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um. Distinct warmth the moment our fan is off <laughs> for the episode. Uh, he says, strange, I'm in fasting, but it doesn't rain at the moment. Oh, well, that's good for you. Hopefully, it will not get there. Um, I'm now realizing I do not have my phone set up to silent. So I should deal with that. But yay, Concordia. That's assuming I can find where my phone is. It's behind the laptop. Careful. Ah, 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 there. Sorry about that. Then, I see. Am I saying internet is moody because of the rain? Yeah, we're expecting, we're hoping it will sustain, it will stay behaved. Um, I guess we might as well get started before the rain makes things worse. Sure. Right? And then, my, and then I realized my glasses are like super mucky. <laughs> Your glasses are an alien organization and trick. They're super mucky. That's terrible. I don't know why you said that aloud. <laughs> this is the week. And this is Rocky. And if it's your first time here, welcome to Monday Pride. Our little space on the internet where I get to say really terrible jokes. And we get to talk about anything we want. That's called this house. Okay, <laughs> This is completely unscripted and not entirely accurate. But at least it's honest. 
Jen, as we talk about everything and anything random live. And if it's not your first time here, thank you so much for joining us on our 46th episode. Can Isn't you imagine? It crazy that we've been doing this 46. for over a month. And, and today's near daily episodes where we spend 30 minutes talking about That's something Toby. we've decided to focus on. And Toby tonight, space, Toby needs space. Our focus is. <laughs> It's too big. Concordia. Concordia. Yeah. So we're talking about the board game Concordia, which is too tall. Yeah. I'll leave it like this because at least it serves as our little platform. But I want to make the name visible there. Yes. So, Toby, why don't you walk us through? What is Concordia? <laughs> Concordia is a game by Mac Jurdis. If I. Jurdis. 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 Um, who has um, made a bunch of games, but has made many, many, many games for, for the Concordia game system itself. Um, and we've only really played Concordia in terms of the games he's made, right? Well, no, in terms of the expansions. No, but I mean like... Of, yes, yes. Of it's the only games. franchise. Yes, the yes. only one we've played. Okay. Wait, camera. Because there's this huge box in the middle and I don't have to. <laughs> so, Concordia is literally labeled as a peaceful trading game. If you look at Board Game Geek, they literally have the word peaceful in the description of the overview. But it's a peaceful trading game where you use action points, card drafting, as well as um, advantage tokens and the like to manage your resources, to expand your your. The Where reach. did it say peaceful? Uh, go to the overview. Overview. Like, ah. uh, there in the description. Oh, that's the official publisher description. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. So um, you you build you build houses, which basically allow you to expand your your connections. You um, do actions based on the cards you play, and then you manage your different resources. And it's all in all, it's a game where it's less about fighting, <laughs> but you will fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. And, you know, it, it's set in the kind of empire building period mm -hmm. of, of Rome. So um, in, in case you were curious, the, the game comes with a manual that actually discusses the inspirations and the locations and the... Um, stories behind why they chose this as the setting. But the actual core, like, gameplay manual is really short, right? Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly. Yes. It's somewhere in the boxes. <laughs> but let's talk about uh, what to expect when you play Concordia. Every player will have a small player board, which is basically their market. Their warehouse. Yeah. And as you can see, the back already gives you a guide on how to map it Holy out cats. for your first session. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked in the back in a long time. <laughs> it's copy this, right? <laughs> well, I did not know this. <laughs> I've only looked at this side. The top of the card also shows you the market value for the different resources in the game. Because the game has five resources. Ah, I was hoping this black would allow it to be more visible. But no, no it's not it, it hid the maroon and the brown. <laughs> you have brick, which is your standard building block for many things. You have cloth, which is the most expensive resource in the game. You have wine, which is more important for getting people. Yeah. You have um, wheat, wheat or food, depending on, uh, I forget which one's in the manual, but it allows you to get more people as well. And the last one being iron, which we tools, keep, which we always, yeah, tools, which we always um, target. Having those materials have different costs, as shown here in the top. But then this also shows you how many of the materials you can contain at a single time. At the start of the game, however, you are forced to work with a smaller, a smaller number of spaces in your marketplace because um, unbuilt colonizers, colonists, colonists. colonists. colonizers, <laughs> unbuilt ah. colonists are visible on the card. Uh, so they occupy the 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 four spaces on your market until you get to build it. Yes. Each player also starts with a deck of cards. This is the fun part. Because well, okay, there is a weird deck building element to this game. 
So players start with their selection of tokens, which is a lot of what we call the house tokens there. Yay. Which you map, which you place on the map to designate locations where you've built your properties in. You have two types of colonists. You have the boat, the sea colonist, and the person. And that will make more sense when we show the map. And finally, you have your point token. But more importantly, you have the cards. So it uh, Concordia relies on this deck of cards to determine what your actions are. You mm -hmm. play the card from your hand, and that's what you're going to do this turn. For example, the senator card allows you to purchase up to two personality cards from uh, the, the cards mm -hmm. on display. And the architect lets you move a colonist, then build... Um, adjacent uh, spaces. Yes, build a colony in adjacent spaces. So hey, Karen. Yeah, everyone starts with the same initial set of cards. So in that sense, it sort of feels like a standard deck building thing. But And then, uh, as usual, once you've played the card, you cannot repeat the action until you take the, the specific action to retrieve all mm -hmm. your cards and reset your hand. The game introduces a wide array of other cards to purchase and develop your hand from. However, the caveat here is the number of cards available depends on the number of players. A small Roman number designates what uh, number of players is allowed to have those cards present. So if you're playing a two-player game, you will not reach the Roman number five cards at all, which means the game ends sooner. But it just it's 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 fine because it's just one of several end game triggers when you run out of cards to purchase mm -hmm. in the market. Now, like other games, the game relies on a market, and the market is where cards... I don't even know what's really called the market. No. <laughs> the card the, the market is where the cards are purchased. As they appear, they move down the market from having expensive added costs to their cards to being freer, which then, as always pushes you whether or not you want to buy the card sooner. Mm -hmm. um, many of the expansions allow variable costs, which make games more Look, interesting. Look, it needs wine! <laughs> yeah, and, um, but I guess the other thing to think about about this, because you could get away with never purchasing a card. It but, is very possible to, to try and not purchase a card. You can still play the game. But that will not ever allow you to win. Because of? Because Toby's a dick. No. Because of the <laughs> lower part of the card. Yeah, so in addition to the cards representing your different actions in the game, they also represent different ways to score points at the end of the game. And yes, multiples of the same type of card mean that you can score more points for achieving certain things. And that is the true brilliance and insidiousness of Concordia so, in trying to balance these cards. So as every player has their small guide card, which easily shows them um, what they need to pay to build specific houses in certain areas, the opposite of that card immediately shows them the summary on how victory points are calculated at the end of the game. And if you're the type who can't read because of the size, like me sometimes, you can rely on the color. So by simply looking at the market and you might say, see this card as one of those things for sale, you can immediately tell, oh, it's a, it's blue, a blue card. Iron. So it will add to my blue points at the end of the game, assuming you built in that direction. Yes. Because each of them follow their own little rule and finding ways to maximize that rule requires you to be familiar with the board. He, oh. he really just wanted to slap that. Don't, yes. don't ruin our board. Concordia. Bye, guys. We're going to hide now. <laughs> Concordia comes with a massive board. Ah, the base game starts with two boards <laughs> immediately. Yeah, it's a reversible board. Yay. And then you can see uh, there are like blue paths where sea colonists travel, and there are brown paths where the other colonists can walk. Mm -hmm. So that kind of helps you through. Okay, so let's keep it in a smaller size so we can talk. Yeah. <laughs> so this board, for example, I haven't shows... seen the base board in a while. <laughs> this shows the different territories, which then match the different areas in the entire map. So for example, um, where was it here? Gallia, which is this blue area here, can be seen as this blue area here. Yeah, where you're, yeah, the and finger is. The reason for that importance is because every territory can produce resources. Before the game starts, small tokens, which appear like these, are randomly 
shuffled based on their letter. In this case, these are the B tiles. <laughs> I'm just gonna watch Toby try to talk around the board. Oh yes, and they're appropriately placed on the proper matching letters on the board. It's a it's a quite a brilliant. Uh, distribution system because later boards will sometimes say like it's only needing A, B, and D cities or A, B, C cities mm -hmm. and that distribution works. It just changes the, the balance of things. And I have prepared Bs to demonstrate an A and D space. There's a B <laughs> in the middle if you're happy. Oh, there is? There is? I, can't, I couldn't see it. That's there. a B. That's a B. So for example, with random selection, this city might have been a B space. Then at the start of the game, they're revealed. And you now know Gallia produces food. Produces food. Now, producing food means anyone who has a house in that space then gains that resource when that location produces. But it's not limited to that. Certain cards, like the prefix, allow you to activate a location to produce. And even if you don't own that space that moment, you get that resource because you were the one who triggered the production there. And it's this little balance that makes the game more interesting because sometimes you'll have other players who will activate locations. And since your house is there too, yay, I get resources. Other times, you will activate them because they allow you to get the resources you normally can't produce. Insidious players activate them to make sure other players don't get to activate them at the most optimal time. What does that mean? His name is Toby. Remember the market has a <laughs> maximum amount of capacity? His name is Toby. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always like, I'm always like very careful to like keep my market moving. Um, my warehouse is moving. Now the game has a lot of other smaller systems and we won't really get into it in depth. This is not a how to play after all, but this is a general idea to how this game looks like. Because if we only left you with, oh, it's a peaceful Mediterranean inspired market game you would probably not know why we like this game. <laughs> it's like when we describe pret a -Porte as it's a fashion game and not explain that it is a complex business simulator that is cutthroat because fashion is cutthroat. Now the game um, comes with its initial two-sided base map, but as you purchase the expansions, you find yourself gaining more huge maps Several um, of the expansions of Concordia are literally just maps. Mm -hmm. It is just the same base game with additional elements. The one expansion that adds <laughs> that adds a more unique element probably is Salsa, which um, adds another resource to the mm -hmm. game called Salt. And it adds um, something called Forum Tiles, which are additional mm -hmm. abilities that are either one-time or... Um, Continuous use throughout the yeah. game. Every expansion um, nicely still catches us by surprise, even if, like for some expansions which are just maps, um, I think Cyprus was one of those. Um, no, no, it wasn't Cyprus. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, they always try to find some way that the map itself adds a new mechanic. Egypt, for example, has the Nile, which um, when production happens along the Nile, certain certain every food happens to everyone else um one of our other favorite expansions was the one that added the fish market that's gallia corsica mm -hmm. and that allows you to do small mini moves before your actual move which makes the game so much more in-depth and exciting and strategic um a joy of the way this game has been designed is that they made it that you can plug and play the the, the expansions you'd like to use and Oh my God, their manuals have guidelines on how certain rules would interact with each other. I mean, you have the forum tiles, for example, with many of the forum tiles giving um, bonuses that you will have for the rest of the game. This one, for example, which is Servius Marcellus, allows you to trade two instead of three goods for the rest of the entire game which might not sound like much, or you might find yourself thinking, but what if I'm not really focusing on trading? But then you'll realize styles like this can start to work with certain locations or with certain expansions where suddenly you can use the trading action to do something else or something um, where uh, when someone trades, then you get more money and stuff like that. So it's an interesting way that there's this delicate balance despite the different levels of systems that's inherently in the game.
So a lot of the elements of the game create unique combinations that make for diverse play. The fact that the cities are randomly distributed across the map changes how the provinces behave. And you always start in the same location. Typically, it is Rome or later on an equivalent central city um, that where we all expand from. Uh, there is the distribution of cards based on the number of players and what cards come out in what order. You don't really know what's going to come along the pipe. There is um, just the, the depending on what card, we, obviously we've got a lot. <laughs> we got, yeah, we got several. Yeah. Uh, depending on like, um, if you, uh, depending on the cards you purchase because of the points that they imply at the end of game, it will affect how you decide to expand across the map. Should you make sure you have a city in every province so that you maximize Saturnus? Or are you going to focus on um, making sure none of your cities involve brick because you're aiming for Jupiter? Yes. So depending on the point, you know, whatever point card you have, it'll kind of dictate your strategy. And people can telegraph what you're doing naturally based on what you purchase because it's, it's open information. Or why not aim for all? <laughs> yes, your name is Toby. <laughs> um, so, um, so stuff we really love about the game. Um, I love how this game has been accessible to not necessarily new players, but after players who have started with a few new open, uh, sorry, not open, um, entry level games. Um, you know, they started gateway with games. yeah gateway games. They started with Splendor. They started with Azul, and then we jumped to Concordia, and they still get it because it's not. It's actually pretty easy mm -hmm. to teach Concordia. Um, the, but yeah, the, the, the mastery of course takes time. But yeah. it's one of a good game. The scoring system is what confuses some people, and it confused us when we were first learning it. Yes, but the game has a built-in way to approach the scoring system if it's your first game. Yeah, you do a weird. <laughs> Scoring round. Scoring round at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And it's cute because you just see how it works and then you reset. Yes. <laughs> it's a training as how the cards work and then uh, and then screw it, move on. Mm -hmm. The cards might be intimidating for some because it feels like there's a lot of reading you will have to do. Like this card is just a lot of text. But the beauty is there aren't that many cards. So yeah. once you've gotten a hold of the basic cards in your hand, I think there's like three other There's only cards, two or yeah. three cards that are Col not. The, the Colonist, the Mercator. The, yeah, the Special Mercator, the Consul. And the Consul. Yeah. So yeah, we may have missed one, but it is okay. So yeah, but uh, across the expansions, they haven't really added more cards. They've added more boards, which is an interesting approach. And they're all boards based on different areas around uh, you know, the Mediterranean Europe area. Now, adding to this is the system known as the Perf Perfectus Magnus. Fischus. Which Perfectus Fischus. <laughs> that's yeah, the that's really, that's really expansion. But this one basically means the player who is the last in the rotation in the first round holds this card. And why is this card important? When they choose to produce for resources, they're allowed to get an extra bonus one. That's a... That's uh, a, yeah, a specific uh, location basically earns them yeah. twice as many. And this is important because it allows the player who normally would be um, the last in line La to sort of catch up. Now, what makes this more interesting is that doesn't end there. For the rest of the game from that point on, this moves counterclockwise. Well, counter to whichever direction you're yes. rotating players. And that means there will be instances when this becomes also part of your strategy. Do you hold on to it and avoid producing to make sure others can't benefit from it for for a certain amount of time? And your name is Toby. <laughs> or do you just use it and be generous like Toby, who thinks everyone can enjoy having He these is not generous. More often than not, he is more likely to collect coins from the provinces. And that Perfectus card does not move if you collect coins from the provinces. So no, don't start with me. I know you. I know you. You hoard that card when it comes your way. I, uh, I can't. Yeah. So as Rocky was teasing, there is the other type, which is Yahoo. Wow, oh, it's so hard to read. Yeah, it's hard to read. Perfectus Piscatus. Yeah. So this Piscatus. We just call card, it Perfectus Fishus because we <laughs> like the name. Uh, but this one basically has the same effect, but rather than trigger when you are getting resources, this triggers 
when you are getting resources because your resources likely will be fish. Uh, yeah, when you're playing with the fish market that comes with the Galaga of Corsica expansion, then um, the provinces produce fish. But then the fish have a separate market. You can buy actions before you move. Mm -hmm. It's it's a whole insidious additional level on top of the game. Um, some people don't like that element. We super enjoy it. Uh, it's super fun. Um, we have layered, uh, and admittedly, because of the, the fairly fast learning curve for Concordia, mm -hmm. we are very quick to bombard our friends with as many expansions as as possible. Yes. And it and it still generally works. Mm -hmm. That uh, we, um, I think we still generally have a good time and everybody just tries to be. And we've had friends who are new to the game, but they still won. Because sometimes... The the fact that victory points depends on the cards that are purchased, and the fact that um, when you get to purchase those cards can wholly depend on when certain cards are available, or and if when, you have the resources or yes. not. Um, it allows all these possible sudden upsets that even a experienced player might find themselves struggling against when there are other players, and. That's what I mean by it's not as peaceful as the label implies. Uh, and I think there's like, it's always fun where, uh, what's the card that you copy? Shoot, the diplomat. Remember. The diplomat. There's a diplomat card which lets you copy an action that another player just played. So based on the, because we're all playing from our own decks of cards. So whatever is his topmost card in this discard pile, you could copy it with a diplomat. And that, is a fun little it's see it's not it's not a PvP ability, but it's good like if you don't have multiple copies of certain cards, or mm -hmm. if a guy bought a custom card that you don't have, then ooh, ooh, I can diplomat that. Yeah. And then it, it plays out. And that and that interplay is quite fun. Um the mix of the different action cards uh do not necessarily always correspond to the same victory point card colors yeah so you will still have to diversify to some extent but it pays attention to pay attention to what other players are purchasing because if you notice someone seems to be hoarding all the blue cards then you know he's gunning for a high victory point at the end of the game based on that condition so you need to build your little expansion so that it increases the cost for toby so that he can't build more city. Or you buy the cards before the player gets more. Yes, you console the console, you know, which is normally what you try to do. So Concordia is an amazing game. It may seem intimidating. It packs nicely. Wow, this, and it was made all the way back in 2013. These two boxes currently are, are, are actually our Sufficient of almost all the existing expansions in the game. Yeah, because the board expansions don't come with boxes, they tend to be poly bag wrap, uh, just the board, and mm -hmm. then with a slight, a, a small insert for the manual. And the manuals are always super thin because the game, the core element of the game, very simple, which is amazing. The manuals are so thin that the existing manuals, which is barely a few pages, already includes the alternate language in one of the pages. That's true. And then the games actually aren't that long. I mm -hmm. mean, to be fair, Concordia games, um, when you because so you can support up to five up to five players, right? Mm -hmm. Then it does. If you get to five players, you're probably going to creep around two hours for the game. I think, um, depending. But because end game triggers are variable. So if you don't like slow down that one player building houses all over the map, once he runs out of houses, the game is over. And in the same way, when someone purchases all the available cards, the game is over. So um, time is not a problem. You can play this game as one of the many games you play in a game night. And then the other thing I like about it is that in terms of components, while I wish all the components were awesome, I think for the price point, versus the amount of wood in this box. Mm -hmm. um, they only made the resources custom within tokens. Uh, the coins are sadly punch-out cardboard, yes. which I wish was otherwise, but it's okay. It's just coins. Um, you will not have a lot of money throughout the game. They will move very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and then the cards are of good stock, I think. It's pretty good quality for the cards. So um, 
uh, really, a lot of love went to the boards, and the yeah. boards are quite. You are probably courting the geek gods, and then you know next month they'll suddenly announce Concordia collector's edition. I'm pretty sure and this we'll, is no! right for a collector's <laughs> edition because, and then the box would be like about yay high, and maybe include a custom map or I don't know, and metal coins. So I want metal coins. Quick comments. Uh, Mai says she loves the diplomat. Allows that allows her to spare. Uh, the better, better cards, cards if someone, someone else, else used it. it. That's true. More often than not, uh, in, in my experience, I see a lot of people diplomating architects mm -hmm. or diplomating Mercator that gets you five Fisteri instead of just three. My also adds peaceful. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are like fishies and fishy. Mitch also adds, no, it's not peaceful. <laughs> and his name is Toby. I see Karen has joined us. I, I'm like so behind in greeting people. Um, um, quick thing, there is another expansion that we have not chosen to get. Oh, yes. And that Venus. is Concordia Venus, which allows a team element to be present in or the game. Or a two-player element? Uh, uh -huh. You can load it real quick. But from what I remember, Venus, uh, Concordia Venus is released in two versions. So if you plan to buy it, make sure you double-check. One version is a standalone Venus expansion, which is meant to be purchased if you already own the core set. The other one doesn't require the core set because oh that sounds funny core set um doesn't require the core rules set because it already contains the basics needed for a game of its own yeah so concordia venus just to be clear can be purchased as a standalone game or you can get it as an add-on for existing concordia yes we have not gotten it for one reason or another mainly because we're, i guess we're not that enamored by the the team mechanic it tries to add because mm -hmm. it because it was it came out around that time when everyone and their dog was making dual games and mm -hmm. two-player games and and i think um, it was their way to bump it up to six players yeah yeah because then you can do a three on three mm -hmm. um it's uh, so i we don't know enough to say it's a it's a bad or a good game i think every time we review the components it's like it's quaint but it's not like a high priority add-on. We mm -hmm. were more excited about adding more maps for variety for our play. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. and that helps. I'm hoping more will still be released. Uh, it would be great to have <laughs> even more options to explore. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch asked, why not Venus? I think we're also just waiting for... We're not going to buy it at full price, probably. We're waiting for a secondary market Venus expansion, I mm -hmm. think. Um, because we and because we still get a lot of play out of the existing maps, uh, we have all the maps already, all uh, including the last one released was um, Balerica and Cyprus. Mm -hmm. Which what did this add? I can't even remember what it added anymore. Oh, no capitals. That offers the fish. Market. Oh, it's the fish market. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, that offers the fish market, and the fish market actually has two. There's the vertical and the horizontal market. Yes, the fish market was separate. Okay, okay, yes. okay, okay. Because before we used to only play with salsa. Yeah, salsa is great though. We didn't even talk about salsa. Salsa, the salt resource, is acts as any resource. Um, mm -hmm. it's a wild card resource, but you can't sell it mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's worth nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, I sell it as salt, but you can sell it as other things. It's awesome to use when you want to create stuff or buy cards because it's very flexible it's very useful uh you can build cities that produce salt and that's awesome when you have it because it helps you move further in the game um, then salt also creates a different sub rule when it comes to scoring because suddenly it can count as an extra house of the um, most number of I've been super wrong all episodes have. saying Corsica is the fish market. So sorry. Go Cyprus. Yeah, go yeah. Cyprus. Cor Corsica is the damn tiny, tiny map that, oh my God, how yes. do we have space the to super grow? super tight map. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and then, uh, but uh, yeah, I guess, I guess from a core experience, um, uh, Concordia and Concordia Salsa are the ones that feel like it's like a, it's a good base game, solid expansion. To really play mm -hmm. and then depending on if you already love concordia then i would invest in the maps you may want to jump all the way to cyprus to get the fish market because it's one of the more unique mm -hmm. abilities introduced uh, there are different videos about it um or you might want to get egyptus because the egypt map is so unique yes um with the whole nile river and food grows along and it the allows Nile. you to travel on the nile river yeah yeah you're instead of traveling on the sea it's 
it's strange, but I, I super enjoy the tightness of uh, Egypt. And then it had that trading thing on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all these things. But yeah, um, um, some people argue against getting all the maps. We got all the maps. And we're probably going to get any new maps to come out. Uh, and then, yeah, we're just waiting for a cheaper option to get <laughs> Venus. Quackers. What else, Toby? What do you want to say? Um, you have to stop the quack. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's Concordia. Um, it's one of our very often played games. Uh, we we love the depth and the complexities of it without becoming too deep and too complex. Um, we like how when we play this, we can't really tell who's winning. That's uh, true. It's a nice hallmark. So you just assume it's Toby. It's a nice hallmark of the system. That you don't feel like you're playing terrible. I mean, there might be times you feel you're playing horribly. You really say terrible? Yes. Um, <laughs> but then you might be surprised that come end of the game, you end up winning because it turns out you were able to grab the cards or you were able to block other players from building. Yeah, areas. you maybe you maybe you got the right like merchant based card mm-hmm. and got the you know then the, there were a lot of that specific type of city that helped you and you get more points. So I guess Minerva, Minerva up, sorry Minerva. Um, yeah, Rocky already gave his tips on whether or not you should get it and what to think of when you do get it. My tips would be. When you play the game, never underestimate the importance of keeping your eyes on the available cards. Yeah. The fact that one card is a multiplier is huge when it comes to points. Imagine if you have 10 points for that action, but then with that second card, it's suddenly 20. With the third card, it's 30. And that's a huge jump from everyone else. If you're not buying cards, you're in trouble. Yes. So make sure you pay attention to that. If you don't think you can manage to do that because there's a lot of things you want to try in the game, at least focus on one. And if you focus on that color, that will allow you to at least catch up or meet with everyone else. So oh, if you're going to focus on one color, that color is not brown. <laughs> Sorry, Mercator at best gets you 10 points per card. It's like, okay, it's like colonists. At least colonists gets you to 12. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, spread out, diversify. Yeah, second would be uh, pay attention to what everyone else is building. One, uh, that affects the costs of your buildings because every time other players are already present in that location, you have to pay the upcoming number of total players. Yeah, the coin, the resource cost is the same. The coin cost is multiplied by the number of houses there will be once you build it. So if it normally costs five to build a house there with the second, pl- with the first player already ahead of you, then you'll now have to pay ten just to add your house. But then the fourth player who will join in now has to pay so much. Pays 20. So it pays, it, it is very important to keep your eyes on those factors. And the last would be don't be afraid to spend your resources. The game, keep it moving, guys. The game somehow keep it makes you feel like, you know, I have all the cloth, I'm, I'm awesome. But then you'll realize that's useless. Unless if your you warehouses mean, are full and the moment someone produces in a province mm-hmm. where you have a house, then you're throwing resources away. Mm-hmm. Keep it moving. Because it's, it's an economic game. It's about uh, an economic empire and not a military empire. And on a related note to that, it doesn't matter if you have 10 pieces of cloth. If to buy something, you need to spend two. Yeah. Cause just because you're buying something doesn't mean you can sell what you have. So that's Concordia. Which means, you know, harmony, right? Then, you know, hey, that's why they say it's a peaceful game. It's a game of happiness. It's economic power, which is the most ruthless power of all. So, yes. (laughs) Yes, that is Concordia. And we hope you enjoyed our time talking about this. Yeah, we spent our last 30, well, more than, slightly more than 30 minutes talking about this. So I hope you'll join us again next time. Okay, that wasn't the script. You sure. already said the first part. Oh, I did. Okay, fine. And then, yeah. If you have other questions for us or suggestions for future episodes, then fill out the form at bit.ly Badoo Pride Ideas. I will say specifically, please stop asking for part two of the same <laughs> topic. I think we want to continue to diversify and, you know, spread things yeah, out. We will consider part two as something we will automatically Next think year. Of. <laughs> when we get to our first year anniversary, episode 365. Okay, and then you can follow us on Twitter, Alto Vino Shade, RG Sunico. Um, you can also check out our blog, badoypride.com. You'll see all our previous episodes and other stuff about us there. Yay. Okay. 
Um, of course, feel free to continue the conversation in the comments below. Let us know what you think about what you've heard about Concordia. Have you played it? Is it peaceful for you? And explain why it's not. But be sure to subscribe for notifications, whether on Facebook or YouTube, so you don't miss our next live stream. Once again, I am Rocky. And I'm Toby. And, and this, this is Badui Pride. Pride. Thanks for watching. Good evening. Okay, smile, smile. I do.